Hi, this is just a quick um, video on the software. So in a previous video, we've discussed the SIMPS2 system. Uh, maybe I'm just going to show you part of the software um, of this, that uses to drive that particular system. So when you first open up the Thales software, you're presented with a whole range of um, electrochemical, photoelectrochemical type experiments that you can run. It's a bit, experiments I'm actually looking for will be found under here. So we'll go to optical methods, photoelectrochemical um, tests. It's really worth noting there's actually, you know, something like eight windows here, but under each of these windows there's multiple experiments. So the good thing about the Thales system is it's got a lot of functionality built into it. I'm just going to literally touch on something like one twentieth of the functionality, and we will give you either one-on-one -on -one or online training in terms of so you can understand how to do the experiment that you want to do. So what I'm going to do today is I'm, I'm going to do an experiment where I start off with a um, light intensity of zero, and I'm going to scan that light intensity to something like 200. So this falls under the definition of transfer functions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a transfer function experiment where I shine a light onto the sample, the electrochemical cell, and then I watch the photocurrent as a function of light intensity. So I start off with a starting value of, let's say, zero watts per meter squared. Remember that the Zana system truly knows the light intensity. It's not guessing it, it knows it. The end value, so I'll go to 200 watts per meter squared. So that's like a fifth of sunlight. I'm going to go up in um, 10 milliwatts per uh, meter squared um, steps. And the second time is I'm going to wait at each, let's say, light intensity for one second and then take a reading of the photo current. So in the background, you might be able to hear some clicking, and that's the um, PP211 potential stat stepping the light source up. And what you can see in real time now is light intensity going 80, 90, the cell current is going up as well. And at the end of it, it will plot all this. This is not just a simple linear element. We have a sort of linear element in here with time constant. So that we'll see what the uh, intensity versus um, current looks like. So here we have, at the bottom, I've got this experiment open to the, um, the light in an office. So we have some interference from the light. I could easily block the light out, um, and then that would be perfect. But we have, we have intensity of light being stepped up, and we have... Um, cell current increasing um, in a non-linear fashion, it starts to plateau off. And then I can export my data or I can save my data. So in summary, what we've done is I've shown you to how to get to the optical methods. And then I said we're going to do a static experiment where I'm just going to increase light intensity and show you the photo current as a function of that. Now there's another type of experiment where it's dynamic and what we're going to do is we're going to modulate the light so when I do a modulated when I say modulated light I will choose the light intensity and then I will put an amplitude over that light intensity and I will end up measuring the cell response as a function of that modulation in the light intensity so we're going to we, we're going to be using this box, this box, and this box. So these are kind of inputs into the experiment. So I have a, uh, let's say, 50 milliwatts per squared input. I'm going to modulate it. So I'm going to put in 100 millivolts. Um, signal over the top of that light intensity so I'm gonna I have a DC light intensity of 50 milliwatts um sorry 50 watts per meter squared 
So I'm going to go back one. So I have a DC of 50 um, watts per meter squared. I'm in, a, um, in an open room at the moment, so we're kind of seeing some changes in light because of the open room. Um, 50, um, 50 watts per meter squared. I've told it now to put a AC component over the top of that of 100 millivolts. And I'm going to tell it to sweep the modulation in light intensity, um, starting at 100, going to 10 kilohertz, and going down to these 100 millihertz. So I'm going to sweep the frequency of that modulated light. And I'll just go back one. And then I'll start my experiment. As I do that, it gives me two options. When you become experienced, you can manually do all the um, set up as I have. If you just want to know the sort of lifetime of um, diffusion of charge pairs and lifetime of recombination of um, of charge pairs, um, you can work out those. The software can basically quickly guide you into working out those time constants. So when I talk about this charge pair, I mean you know a photon falls upon the sample, it creates an electron and a hole. Do they diffuse or do they recombine? So you can work out those time constants quite quickly. I'm just going to start a manual experiment today. You can hear the instrument clicking in the background. It sort of looks somewhat like a standard impedance spectroscopy experiment, except the we're not modulating a voltage, we're not modulating a current, we're actually modulating um, the um, the light intensity, and we're looking at the sort of photo current efficiency, the amps per watt per meter squared. So we're getting a sense of, you know, if I increase the um, the frequency of light change, you know, does my efficiency go up or down? And that's really starting to tell us something about the diffusion and the recombination of the, uh, of, the of the pair of the, the hole with the electron. So you can see that at in this particular test cell at high frequencies, we really lose our photocurrent. You know, we basically lose our efficiency. And then, as we become more DC, i.e., we're at lower frequencies, then we uh, get higher uh, photocurrents. So the sort of data is as as we would expect it. I'll let it complete. It obviously takes longer at the when I say longer at the lower frequencies. It takes longer to collect the data. So I'll let it complete. But I can sort of summarise. So so far, I've shown you something like one twentieth of the um, software functionality just under the say, say photo electrochemical system. Um, and we've done sweeping intensity and looking at the photocurrent, and now we're looking at modulating um, light intensity and looking at the um, photocurrent. So we're almost, I, I, I think I set a limit of something like um, 100 um, here, so it's, it's on its way down. I'm, I'm going I'm to stop this now and just do a, a quick summary. So I sort of um, finished the spectrum early, but this is my um, spectrum. I can see my photocurrent and my phase angle, I can change what view I get, but as the frequency goes up, the photocurrent goes down, as the frequency goes um, lower, we get our maximum photocurrent or maximum efficiency. So in summary, when you first open the software, you get offered a whole series of electrochemical um, experiments. What I'm particularly looking for is under optical methods, and then under optical methods, there's a um, um, static T TF experiment where I change light intensity and look at photocurrent, or there's a dynamic TF experiment where I have the light intensity constant, but I put an AC signal over the top of that, and I watch the photocurrent efficiency as a function of that frequency. Okay, thanks very much. Again, we can do face-to-face um, -face, um, training or we also offer training online as well, where we can share our screens, share our webcams with you and help you focus on the experiment that you actually want to do. Okay, thanks very much.